Hi, this is a video that covers chapter six, which is risk and return, which is the basis for stock analysis and stock portfolio analysis. Comic reads here, be careful. All you can tell me is be careful. So this whole notion of risk and return is a central one for all investment analysis. We're going to look at five different learning objectives in this chapter. The first is basic return and risk concepts. Number two is the nature of standalone risk. Third is portfolio or market risk. And then looking at a central concept, which is the capital asset pricing model. We'll see implication of this throughout our book relating not only to how the markets work, but also what is the required return that investors have for publicly traded companies. And the fifth learning objective is market equilibrium and the notion of market efficiency. This is our chart that we've seen so many times. And just to orient ourselves, the bottom is where we're at. We've gone through the free cash flows, the valuation formula. We've looked at cost of debt, in particular, the bond pricing and yield to maturity. And then also now we're looking at the cost of equity. And when we look at cost of equity, we will consider what are the risks that exist in the marketplace and with the stock returns, and also look at the business risk and the environment. So first, what are investment returns? So it's a way to quantify the results of an investment. We'll see that there are two ways people normally express their returns. One is in dollar terms, the other is in percentage. Just to give a simple example, let's say we had an investment and the cost is a thousand and it's sold after one year for 1060. In terms of dollars, you simply subtract the value at the end of the year, 1060, minus what you paid for it or invested at 1000. So the return is simply $60 in dollar terms. In percentage terms, you take the profit, which in this case is $60 divided by the base, which is the initial cost or the investment amount of a thousand. So we end up with 60 divided by 1000, which is 6%. One way we could express this is on our investment of $1,000, we made a 6% return on investment in one year. If we look a little more deeply, it's not as simple as a number. We often see that there are scenarios. We don't really have a way to predict the future. What we look at is what are the different outcomes that are possible? And let's assign, if we can, probabilities to each of those outcomes. And so this is an example. And if you look at the chart on the left side here, we're looking at worst case scenario of 10% of losing money, 14% loss, to kind of a poor case, 20% chance, a loss of uh, 4%, most likely with a probability of 40% of making 6%, good case of 20% probability with a 16% return, and finally kind of the best case scenario of 10% probability, but a large gain of 26%. What we notice on the right is a graph. If we look at the distribution of the returns and the probabilities, we see that it's a fairly nice distribution that has the expected return at 6%, but also the array of worst case and best case. We can do some analysis on this. If we wanna be more rigorous than just looking at a graph or looking at a chart of numbers, we can compute what's called the expected value. And the expected value puts together the outcomes in rates of return, and it weights it based on the probability of the occurrence. So this formula here, which is kind of scary looking for people that don't use math very much, and I'll explain all the symbols and all that. R hat, so that's what we call this. The hat represents, it's the expected value, equals this Greek symbol. It's a sum command, it's a summation, which means that we're going to take this product, which is the probability of event number one happening, times the rate of return for outcome number one, and that is what's in the parentheses. And then we're gonna do that and then add to it what happens when we increment it for, to outcome number two, outcome number three, four, and five. As you notice, we had five outcomes, so we're gonna weight each one based on its probability. And when we add those together, it's our expected return. And there's an Excel function that does a shortcut for us. It's called the sum product. So let's go through the math. It's actually easier than it may look with all those Greek symbols. So here's the numbers we had before which are the different probabilities and the expected amount. And so here I'm gonna put 
the product. Okay. And so if we say 10% times the negative 14, and we copy that all the way through to the bottom, we get this range, and let's format it as a percent. And if we add those together, sum, and that's what that summation was all about, we get this number, which is an expected return of 6%. So this is called the expected rate of return. And I'll make that larger just so it looks a little more prominent on the screen. Okay, so this is the expected rate of return. All right. The shortcut, as we mentioned, there's a sum product. Here, we, instead of having to do this multiplication and then summing, we could simply use the Excel function called sum product, open parens, and we do, as the, the name shows, arrays. So we do an array of the probability comma, the array of the returns, close parens, equals, and you get this number, which again, we'll format in the same fashion, and we'll make it larger, and we see the expected rate of return is the same. So let's uh, make that larger, and shade it. So that's the same amount, okay? Getting back to the expected value, we simply multiply the probability times the outcomes and we add those together and we get to an expected value. If we were to put this in a sentence, we would say, although there are many different outcomes with different probabilities, our expected value for this investment is 6% rate of return. Okay, so let's look a little deeper. Let's say this is a normal distribution kind of a bell curve with a mean and a certain distribution, low and high outcomes. So that's a normal distribution. However, there are different shapes to distributions. And so let's say this orange one is normal, and then we have this blue one. Which of these two distributions is riskier? One of the things you notice is that risk is signified or measured by the variance or the amount of variation away from the mean. And so the greater the variation, the higher the risk. True, there's a downside risk, but there's also kind of an upside um, probability. It's kind of hard to call something upside risk. The low risk is where the, the distribution is tight, where the expected outcomes are pretty close to what we would expect. And so it's pretty clear if you looked at these two distributions, the orange has a much wider, flatter distribution. So the outcomes could be well below negative 10% or above 20%. Whereas the blue, you're pretty much in between negative 10 and 20%. Notice also that both have the same expected value. It could have identical 6% expected values, but have different distributions. In order to do a measurement, we have to have another measure other than simply expected value. Let's look at some of these methods. 